Welcome, collectors, and thank you for joining me for another brand new episode of Diecast Emporium. Today we're going to be doing something completely different. Uh, a couple weeks ago, before I went on vacation, I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions, things that you guys wanted to know about me, uh, within reason, of course, in involving models or about Diecast Emporium, things you guys wanted to know. And uh, it was a pretty good response. So thank you guys for taking time and uh, submitting your questions. I've taken eight of the best right here from you guys and going to answer them honestly. So I hope that uh, this video will be enjoyable. Now, instead of staring at my ugly mug, I'm going to have some various models as placeholders in the screen throughout the video as you guys are listening to me. I think that's kind of the best way to do one of these question and answer videos. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First question from a good buddy of mine in the community, Cat631K asks, if you could get any one model for free, what would it be and why? Okay, so this actually, this is a tough question, and I actually had to think about this for a minute. I know thinking hurts. Um, I probably spent 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out how I was going to answer this question. And part of that is because I'm very fortunate and have worked hard and have been able to obtain almost everything that I've wanted over the years or, or have been looking for in the community. And then I discovered that there was, remember, there was one thing. There was definitely one standout one that if I could get, for, forget the free aspect of it, if there was any one model that I could have the opportunity to own, I would figure out a way to get it. Um, and that is the Cat 8750 Dragline. Now, if you've never seen this model, I believe it was made by TWH. I don't know how many were made. I know of maybe one or two. Uh, you can see one of these actually on the Awesome Earth Movers YouTube channel, so shout out to them. And it was on display at Balma 2013. That's the show in Munich, Germany. It is a 150 scale model. It's absolutely massive. I'm assuming if it ever went on sale or whatever, it would probably fetch close to 25, 30 grand easily. Uh, again, I don't know how many were made. If it was, you know, just something done specifically for Cat after they, you know, acquired the Bucyrus line of shovels and then changed everything over to Cat briefly. And I don't know where it is now. I don't know if they have it in Peoria. I don't know if it's in some private collector's basement. Maybe that's something that I could find out and get an answer to you guys somewhere down the road. I'd like to know for sure. But to answer your question, that is the one model that I don't have that I would love to have in my collection, uh, although I probably would have to mortgage my home um, and maybe sell a kidney or maybe a testicle. I don't know. Um, so I hope that answers your question. All right, number two, Trash Truck Central asks... Do you have any garbage truck die cast? Actually, yes, I do, but I don't have a lot. Um, this is a Greenlight Collectibles Mac front loader garbage truck that they released a number of years ago. This is the first version of it that didn't come with waste management graphics or anything. To me, to be completely honest, nothing against Greenlight. I understand they have to build toward a mass-produced budget, but this is pretty underwhelming. Uh, nothing opens. It didn't come with a dumpster or anything. Of course, the back dump part doesn't open or anything. Um, I don't own any trash trucks in 154 scale, to my recollection. And I went over my sheet, uh, and I couldn't find any either. I'll get, I'll explain what my sheet is, actually, as we answer another question further down. Uh, I do have a couple in 187 scale. There's a first gear side loader, another Mac. Pretty decent model, but again, it is static. Nothing works on it. And then here is a Bowley uh, International 7600 garbage truck, standard style garbage truck. Surprisingly, this is by far the least expensive, but it is the most functional and uh, arguably probably the best looking and most realistic adaptation of what a modern U.S. style garbage truck looks like. So those are three examples of what I have in my collection. Now, I did do recently a sanitation 187 scale truck collection video. I will post that link to the top right portion of the screen right now. So Trash Truck Central, if you are interested in watching that video and seeing more garbage trucks that I have, check out that link right now. And thanks for your question, by the way. Okay, number three. This is from James Hawkins and California X, which actually is Cali underscore Fornia underscore X. Um, how many models do I have in my collection? So this is a question I get a lot. And this is a tough one to answer. Um, 
I don't know is the short answer because it changes weekly. It fluctuates. I am constantly buying new models. I'm constantly getting, you know, one or two in from different companies that want a product demonstration video done or a product review done. So that's hard to answer. However, I, I briefly alluded to my sheet, quote unquote, a, a moment ago. Since 2004, I started a um, insurance sheet, should the worst happen, knock on wood. And I, since 2004, every single model in my collection is uh, categorized and is in a computer program. So number one, I know what I have. Number two, my insurance company knows what I have. So I list the model. I list what I paid for it, what the current um, going rate is for it at the time that I listed it, its scale, its description, all kinds of the manufacturer of it, obviously, and then its product SKU number. And this helps me keep track of what I have um, and where it's kind of located on my my just my storage units or my display shelf. So when I need to pull it out for various different reasons, I know where it is. Because when you have a collection that's the size of mine, it's sometimes somewhat overwhelming and, and difficult to locate, you know, a piece of your collection that you might be looking for. So I guess if we're not including the Hot Wheels and Matchbox, you know, the, the, the small cars that I grew up with that I had as a child and I still have to this day, um, if we're not including those, I would say easily, easily 10,000. Um, if you are including open and carded Hot Wheels, I'd say that number easily doubles um because you know in my younger years i did collect uh hot wheels and matchbox and because i had a paper out even as young as six seven years old and i was one of those really weird kids for a variety of different reasons but i had the the sense or the knowledge even that young to buy two of everything so i'd buy you know, one of the a Hot Wheels car that I really like to open and play with it, but I'd also buy a second one if it was available just to keep carded, to have in a collection. Um, so I, I have quite, quite the collection of Hot Wheels and Matchbox as well. Um, although I think it's kind of getting to the point out of necessity for room that I think I might end up start offloading or selling some of those, especially since the market for Hot Wheels and Matchbox is pretty decent right now. Hope that answers your question, guys. Thanks for the question. All right, Lucas Sturgis. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. I think he's trying to be funny here with this question, so I'll uh, I'll entertain him. I'll appease him. His question is, very simply, Caterpillar or Komatsu? Well, obviously, if you've watched my channel or you've seen my collection or you know anything about me, the answer is clearly Komatsu. All right, number five. Uh, Alex Hawken asks... Do you have any lift models, JLG, etc.? Yes, I do. Again, not a lot. Um, I brought out two because these are both in 150th scale. This is a Norscott um, Scissor Lift SM3248E from the late 90s, early 2000s. Pretty cool little lift here. Pretty functional. You can um, raise and lower it. It also has these two sides that extend out which is kind of cool even has working steering back here again for as old as it is pretty nice little model nice to throw in a construction diorama the other lift model i have this is super old school from conrad this is the grove man lift amz what is this amz 66 66 has your little bucket on the back check out this small detail with the grove letters in the um extendable arm section so again, not a lot. I don't really focus on lifts or cranes in my collection. In fact, I don't have very many of those at all. Um, but those are the two that I do have in 150 scale. So thanks for your question. Hope you liked checking those out. I do have a review of both of those on my YouTube channel, by the way, if you want to see an up-close look at both of those. So there you go. Okay, uh, scale... Road Builders on Instagram asks, how long have I been collecting? Pretty simple answer to this, 30 years. Um, I still have my very first die-cast toy, quote-unquote, that I was given uh, at birth, actually, by my aunt. So I'm told this was the uh, very first toy I was given, and 
I, you know what, darn it, I should have brought that out for this video. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the thumbnail or something. I believe it was made by Majorette, and it's a little Volkswagen Beetle police car with lights and sound. And you push down on the wheels, and it does this little tune and flashes the lights. Uh, so I've been told by my mother and my father that was given to me at birth by my aunt, and I still have that little thing in Believe it or not, that thing still flashes the lights. The The noise is not, not quite what it used to be, but, I mean, it's 31, almost 32 years old. Um, but, yeah, I've been, I've been collecting really the majority of my life. I, I have most of the stuff that I grew up with. When I was really young, um, I, I focused on what most younger kids did, and that's, you know, Matchbox and Hot Wheels. Um, I was big into Tonka trucks. I had maybe six or eight of those. Uh, but my big thing when I was young was those, I think the company was called New Bright, and they were they made big 1 25th scale-ish fire trucks, and they actually made pretty realistic replicas. They had engines, they had quints, they had rear-mounted tower 100-foot aerials, they had tiller rigs, they had ambulances, they had quite the extensive collection, and that was my favorite thing growing up. That was just the bee's knees to me. Um, unfortunately... When I was seven, we had a flood, and I ended up losing all of my remote controls and most of those fire trucks because they required batteries. And uh, begrudgingly, all that stuff was was done away with. But uh, besides that, you know, most of the stuff that I grew up with, I still have. So I, I'd say easily 30, 31 years I've been collecting and still going strong. Uh, number seven, Ray's Diecast or Ray's Excavation and Construction. What other OEMs do you like besides Cat in the model and the real world? Well... Uh, that's a very, very good question. So obviously, both Real World and Model of Cat is number one um, for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, you know, you guys know that I'm doing my thing with Diecast Masters and CCM, which are licensed model companies, promotional companies within the Caterpillar realm. Uh, but I'm also a shareholder with Caterpillar, and I've been a shareholder with them for many, many years. Uh, I do like the Vierkin Group. That company of manufacturers, so you have the Kleeman Rock Crushers, you have the, the Ham or the Hom Rollers, uh, you have the uh, Vogler Asphalt Pavers, and obviously the Vierkin Cold Planing Machines and Surface Miners. I'd say that's probably a clear second. I also like Bomeg. Bomeg makes some pretty cool-looking machines. I like Volvo. They they have some, particularly their, their articulated dump truck sector. I really like the way they're... Articulated dump, articulated dump trucks, articulated rock trucks. Some of their excavators are really cool looking. Um, never really been a huge fan of Libir. Never been a huge fan of uh, John Deere. Not really been a huge fan of Komatsu, I'll be honest. Um, I do like Case. I, li I think their backhoes are pretty cool looking. Their excavators, dozers, graders, the, never really done much for me, but I, I always love a classic Case backhoe. And I'd, I'd say that's pretty much it. Um, so definitely Cat, Virkin Group, Case, Bomeg. Um, another thing that might surprise a lot of people, especially those that don't follow all the videos I release, I am not a big crane guy. In fact, across all scales, I think I own less than five cranes in my entire collection, mobile, uh, rough terrain, or otherwise. I'm just not a big crane guy. Um Cranes are very, very, very expensive, no matter what scale they are. They also take up a lot of room, and they're a lot of commitment to build and maintain. And I just, I've never, I've never been a real big crane guy. Now, if you are into cranes, make sure you check out Crane, uh, Crane Dude 7 I believe is his name on Instagram and YouTube. He has a world class crane collection. He's a great guy too. So shout out to him if you're into cranes. That's his deal. Check him out. All right, last question. Uh, I think this is LMK underscore one underscore heart cat, something like that. Why can't people just have normal usernames? Uh, what's your favorite custom model you've done? Good question. This is one of them that you've been seeing throughout this video. Uh, this is by the model mechanic on Shapeways. This is a Caterpillar 527 um, cable skitter. Uh, this is his design, his CAD design. It comes in pieces, obviously. It comes on a spruce, which you then have to prime, assemble, paint, decal, 
and detail. And I think this is one that turned out really, really good. I actually added working um, hydraulics to this for the blade, for the VPAT blade. I like the sweeps. Um, that's authentic cat paint, authentic decals. Just turned out really, really good. I think it looks awesome. But that, as good as that is, that's probably not my favorite. This is my favorite. This is also a 3D printed design, not of my own design, of course, but by my own finishing, if you will, or, or completion. Uh, I believe this is a kit by TYD on Shapewa Shapeways uh, in 187 scale, just like that, sh that skitter was. This is the Caterpillar RM500B soil stabilization unit, something that has been missing in every scale that CAT does models for. For whatever reason, there has never been a CAT soil stabilizer done in either 80, uh, 187 scale, HO scale, 150th scale, 125th scale, whatever. You name the scale, they've never done one of these. So having the ability to have one of these in at least HO scale so you can have a soil stabilization fleet really was incredible. And I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into getting this as realistic looking as possible. I tried to do the windows, you know, in this silver reflective paint finish to get it looking the best I could. My other alternative was to cut the windows out, which I just wasn't going to do that. I didn't think that looked the best. I did all these hoses, um, added the bolt detailing on here. You have your exhaust, your air cleaner, all your hoses going off on the side, which would of course connect to a water truck or a, you know, a stabilization truck. Again, cat decals, the grill, which actually that was pretty hard to do and stay in the lines. Um, I love this thing. I think it looks absolutely incredible. It's nice to have it. The only thing I wish would have been part of the design is the milling drum underneath, which of course isn't present, but when you're displaying this, you don't see that, so it doesn't really matter that much. So that will conclude this question and answer video. I hope you guys have liked this. I know we're, we're getting close here to 17, 18 minutes, almost 20 minutes. Um, but I wanted to make sure I gave each and every one of you that took the time to ask me questions um, the answer that, that, sh that you wanted to get. Um, I, I really hope that you have enjoyed this. I have enjoyed this. I, you know, I kind of learn a little bit about myself when I'm doing answers for these, especially, you know, cat 631 case question where I had to go, Hmm, if I could have any model, what would it be? I honestly didn't really know because usually when a model comes out that I want, I just go get it. So, um, yeah, I, that, that cat 8750 drag line. Again, you guys can see a picture of that and a, well, actually a video of it. Um, on the awesome Earth Movers YouTube channel, just type in Cat 8750 Dragline, and it's at the Balma 2013 show. That would probably far and away be that one. I, I guess realistically, just because this just came to my head now, to finish my sword red truck collection, I don't own the Mac flatbed. I, li I literally have every other sword truck, um, whether it be the service truck, the entire distributor, dump trucks, um, low boys, you name it, I've got it, but I don't have the Mac flatbed. So that would, that would probably be another one that I would, that I would get, but not, you know, I'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for, for it that I've seen them go at the DHS auctions. I, I'm not, I'm not going to pay that, which is probably why I don't have one because I'm not willing to pay the egregious inflation prices. I, I'd be willing to pay probably maybe a hundred over retail, especially if it's used. Uh, but probably not much more than that. Anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. Just allow me a little bit of time to get back to you because lately I've been getting between 15 and 20 messages a day on there. And this is not my full-time day job, so it does take a little bit of time for me to answer you. But I do try to get back to all of your DMs. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you in the next Diecast Emporium review.